Good morning, St. John's. Good morning. And uh, welcome to all of you in our virtual community. Thank you for joining us for our celebration of uh, Holy Eucharist uh, with baptism, a very special day uh, for young Cooper. So looking forward to that. Um, our opening hymn is hymn number 304, I Come With Joy to Meet My Lord.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wife shall become a prostitute in the city, and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be parceled out by line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land, and Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's psalm is Psalm 82, which you'll find in your handout. We'll read Psalm 82 together in unison. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan, defend the humble and needy, 
Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods, and all of you children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth, for you shall take all the nations for your own. This morning's second lesson is a reading from Paul's epistle to the Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossia. Grace to you and peace from our God, our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before the word of the truth the gospel that comes to you, just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world. So it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and he has made known to us your love in the spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hand of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I speak in the name of the one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Today's gospel is probably a familiar one to you. It is one that is certainly taught in Sunday schools and, uh, and perhaps you've heard it many times. But let's dwell on it some um, and uh, try to, to see what's behind some of the, the teachings that Jesus is doing. So uh, for a little bit of review, so Jesus uh, was coming from the Galilee. He was traveling south through Samaria to head to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And uh, the Samaritan territory was not very friendly uh, to the Orthodox Jews uh, at the time. Uh, there was a bit of a sibling rivalry here. So they worshipped the same God, but they didn't all do it in the same way. I'm sure that there's no way you could relate to this, being 21st century people. Um, so they, they, they struggled here. So uh, just a chapter earlier, um, Je uh, Jesus sent James and John uh, to a Samaritan village and uh, it was to prepare the way for Jesus, basically, you know, get, get him a place to stay that night. And they rejected him completely. And James and John uh, come up to Jesus and say, I think we should throw fire from heaven down and burn the place. And Jesus is like, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to go to the next town and someone will receive us. So the Prince of Peace lived up to his title. Uh, so there was this, uh, this confrontation, though, between the Samaritans and the, uh, the Jewish people that was really starting to come out. And a couple weeks ago, I told the story about how some pilgrims had been killed uh, by Samaritans, and, uh, and the Jewish people tried to get some help from the government. They were denied because uh, the Samaritans had bribed an official, and, uh, and then uh, the Jewish folks got some bandits uh, to uh, seek revenge, and then the government crushed the bandits, but that only scattered them, and it ended up being a guerrilla war. So it was a real mess, and there was a lot of uh, animosity between these two groups. They were perhaps getting along worse than they had in a few hundred years. 
So Jesus, as he's traveling, is not by himself. He's with the apostles, yes, and some disciples, but he's also with uh, a lot of other pilgrims. You know, the uh, city of Jerusalem, which was about the same size as Manchester, Connecticut is today, uh, blew up to a million people during these big feasts. So it's like all these people were on the roads traveling and Jesus is chatting with them as they go. And a few of them were what the scripture calls lawyers, but that's not exactly quite like we usually use that word. Um, they were students of scripture. You know, they, they were studying Torah, you know, the law, the instruction. Uh, so one of these young men gets into a conversation with Jesus and says, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, how, how can I uh, have eternal life? And Jesus says, well, you know, do what's written in the law, you know, and, uh, and, and you know, what does that mean to you? And, and the uh, student gives essentially a wrap-up of the great commandment. So he answers, well, Jesus congratulates him, you know, perhaps that would be the end of the conversation. But the student, um, according to Luke, wanting to justify himself, that's a bit of an unkind reading. Jesus doesn't seem terribly upset by the question, but he's asked, well, who is my neighbor? And really, it's not a bad question to ask. Who is our neighbor that we're supposed to love? Who, are, who, who do we have some responsibility in this life to take care of? And you can answer that in a lot of different ways. And perhaps it's really restricted. Basically, my family and the people I like or who, are, who look like me uh, or believe the same things I do, that's my neighbor. You could believe that. Perhaps we have no responsibility for anyone outside of, of the country. You could define that as your neighbor. But Jesus, rather than give a technical answer, decides to tell a story, as Jesus often does. So he tells the story of the, the Good Samaritan, as we know it. So uh, this person gets uh, beaten up by bandits, which, as I mentioned, was a problem at that time. And he gets just kind of tossed off to the side. Two people come first, a priest and a Levite. Now, the priests and the Levites, there's a bit of a, like a distinction without a difference here. All priests were Levites. But they were going on this road because they were going to serve in the temple. Now, a lot of folks, when you read priest in the Old Testament, think it's somebody like me. But our jobs were actually quite different. Uh, the Levites... Um, were the only ones who could do any job at the temple. So the people in charge of filing or sweeping the floor or all the butchering that needed to be done, you know, those were all Levites, you know, all, all, and you could call them all priests. Uh, those were the jobs they did. So as they were going to the temple, they encounter this man who is hurt, bleeding, injured. Now, according to Leviticus, they could not touch him without becoming ritually impure. And now that sounds a little funny. Uh, we often think of impurity as being bad, but that's not really what's meant here. Um, Lifeblood, your, your, yourself, your, your, the blood that's going through your veins and everything right now, was viewed by the ancient Israelites as being very precious and very special. And when you came into contact with it, you actually needed some time away from the community before you could come back. So as the priest and the Levite see the person who is bleeding and in need, if they address the need of that person, then they, they won't be able to do their job. They won't be able to go to the temple and serve. Then comes a Samaritan person person not exactly quite of the same faith, though believing most of the same things. And he comes along and sees the man hurting, and he picks him up, he, he, he gets off of his donkey or horse, whatever the animal was, puts the, the man on it, walks to an inn, gets him all cleaned up, and then pays for this person's medical bills. What a tremendous act of mercy just to find a stranger on the side of the road, not only help them, but even pay their bills. And at the end of the story, the, uh, 
the student answers Jesus by saying the one who, was, who showed that uh, they were a good neighbor was the Samaritan because he showed mercy. And that's a wonderful word to use, mercy. Not just an act of kindness, but he tried to understand what it would have been like to be that person. So this Samaritan is just going by the side of the road. He gets beaten up. He didn't do anything wrong. But who is responsible for him? The priest and the Levite answered Jesus' question, or or answers the, um, the young person, the student's question, who is my neighbor? The priest and the Levite said, this person is not my neighbor. I do not owe anything to them. My job is more important than me helping this person. The Samaritan rules differently and says that I have to help this person because this person is most in need. And he goes ahead and does it. Now the Samaritan and the Levite were following the law. They they didn't exactly do anything wrong according to the Torah. But the point Jesus is making is that you have to look at what's most important. And the basic teaching of scripture is to love, to love God and to love neighbor. And anything else that scripture may teach, while it might be a good thing, is not as important as love. So that Samaritan followed scripture in a way that the priest and the Levites did not. We live in a world right now that is rather puritanical. Um, that we have uh, groups of people that are trying to, um, trying to create purity tests on, uh, on what you believe to join certain groups. We have this even in our politics. You know, the, uh, the far left hates Nancy Pelosi more than Trump, and the far right uh, tried to hang Mike Pence. You know, so there's this sense that we have to be very, uh, our, our, our definition of neighbor needs to be really small. You know, the people who belong to our group have to be pure in every way have to believe all the same things I believe, or they're not good enough, or they're a traitor. And to this, we have to preach the gospel of good news, that neighbor is all of us. And if a neighbor is in need, then even our job, like the priest or the Levite, is not as important as addressing that person's deep need. That person needs to be loved. So today, it's so wonderful to see so many babies uh, today. I just love that sound. It is the voice of angels. uh, And we are going to make a Christian today. You know, we, uh, we are not born Christians. We're born blessed of the Lord and beloved, but we're not born Christians. We become a Christian when we are baptized. And in that, we say a few different things. We make promises, especially the parents and the godparents, that they will do absolutely anything in their power to stand up and fight against evil in this world to protect that child. And then we say, as a whole community, that we're going to do everything in our power to help him in his life in Christ. And that's an important promise that we make. We say that little Cooper may not be very old, but he is my neighbor, and I would do anything for him. Are we ready for a baptism? In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'd like to invite uh, parents and godparents up. (laughs) 
The Holy Baptism service uh, begins on page 301 in the Book of Common Prayer. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, Help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Will you, who witness these vows, do all in your power to support this person in his life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing himself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, and the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, myself. will you cherish the wondrous works of God and protect the beauty and integrity of all creation? Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send him into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt and to the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Cooper, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Cooper, behold the light of Christ. Cooper, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Let us pray together on page 308. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you.
uh, a lot of fun. So I hope that, uh, that you can, uh, can join us. There's uh, uh, Maggie, my, my big blueberry helper there. We picked like eight pounds of blueberries uh, and there's uh, waffles and we made blueberry muffins and raspberry scones and all kinds of things. So uh, look forward to chatting with you uh, uh, down uh, in the parish hall. Um, next week, uh, we begin uh, a, a rotation of uh, outdoor services. So the 10 o'clock service is going to be outside in the Memorial Garden up the hill uh, for uh, the, the next three weeks. And for those of you watching at home, uh, we're going to stream the 8 o'clock service. And the 8 o'clockers are really looking forward to being on camera, let me tell you. <laughs> so... Uh, so, uh, but we'll be outside um, for the next three weeks, and then uh, after that, uh, later in August, uh, we'll switch, and then the 10 o'clock will be inside, and the 8 o'clock will be outside, and uh, we'll stream the 10, 10 o'clock as, as, we, uh, as we normally do. Um, there's a men's ministry meeting uh, on Wednesday uh, at 6.30 in the Undercroft uh, downstairs. Um, does anyone else have anything to announce? Wonderful. Well, congratulations again, Cooper. It was, uh, uh, you were terrific, and, uh, and we look forward to seeing you again. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring, bring offerings and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, whoever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep in peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see how gracious the Lord is.
in our bulletin, uh, all baptized Christians uh, may receive here at St. John's, uh, if you are an Episcopalian or not. Um, it does matter to me because we're, we're good people, but, but whoever you are, you're welcome here. Uh, and uh, we have gluten-free wafers uh, over here uh, with Wes. And, uh, and because of uh, coronavirus and everything, we still have not yet uh, have the common cup. So we receive in one kind here. Uh, for everyone uh, on this side, if you could uh, come up and then depart around there and back into your seat and this side uh, going this way around. All right, let's see the star of the show first.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries and we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
go forth in peace.